Hi, all you lovely kings, queens, and in-betweens, and welcome back to another board game video here on the channel, featuring both myself and Jeremy. Hello. As you know, we not only are board game dragons, we're super board game dragons. And what this means is we buy a lot of games because we're like, oh, that looks fun. And then we don't get around to playing it. And that makes us a little bit sad inside. And today we're going to take a little bit of time to talk about those games that we just didn't get around to playing in the past year. The games that we want to play this year and share with all of you. Our top tens. Isn't that right, Jeremy? Yes. And today I'm going to start off the list because I am all energetic and ready to go with my number 10, Monar Tofu Game or Sumiku Jirashi. I found this on one of those Japanese snack sites that also sell board games for some reason. A weird combination, but that's okay. And I bought it because it looked really cute. Like a lot of Japanese games, they have the kawaii pieces that really call to me. And apparently this one has a bunch of different game modes, but the overall premise is you don't really know how to use chopsticks and it's supposed to teach you how to use chopsticks chopsticks while playing a game. Now, I do technically know how to use chopsticks, but I do struggle with the slippery foods. Are you like me, Jeremy? Do you struggle with the slippery foods? Yeah, I'm not particularly good at using chopsticks. So this is a fun way for us to learn how to use chopsticks, and I'm excited to do that. So we could be good with the slippery foods for when we go to Japan one day. That's exciting. I always like gamifying a skill to help you learn a new skill. Makes it a lot easier, right? Because now you're entertained. Makes you excited to learn that skill. Absolutely. Do you want me to give my number 10? Yeah, Jeremy, give us our number 10. Your number 10. I got there. My number 10 is Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle, which is a cooperative deck building game. You can play with up to four players and you're going up against Voldemort's minions. I used to be more into Harry Potter than I am now, but I do typically like the theming and I'm a big fan of deck building games. So having a deck building game that's geared around something that I enjoy, I think will be a good time like something like Tyrants of the Underdark, which is theming that I really enjoy. So I'm hoping that I'm going to enjoy this too. I think you will because it's true. You really do like your deck building games and Harry Potter was kind of our childhood right after Pokemon. And having the cooperative aspect is good because sometimes you don't want to play a competitive game. You just want to play something cooperative. I'll do my number nine first. And my number nine is Ninja Squad, which is a cooperative game and a competitive game. You have two different sides to the board and one side is cooperative and the other side is like a PVP race kind of thing. It looks really cool and unique in the way that the board's set up. So I'm super excited to try this because I also like Ninja as a theme. I've also heard that part two is like Mario Kart and Mario Kart was my childhood jam. So I'm excited to see if that rolls out. Mario Kart with ninjas, that seems awesome. I hope it's awesome. My number nine is a game called Sushi Roll, which is made by the same people who made Sushi Go and Sushi Go Party. And it's basically Sushi Go, but with dice. So even more luck based, which is, you know, always what I need in my gaming because I have all the luck in the world, obviously. I'm like a lucky cat in a Chinese restaurant just waving goodbye at you. Sushi Go is one of my favorite little on the go games. So anything that's made by the same people that made Sushi Go, I'd be excited to try. This year, Jeremy, this year. See ya, man. And y'all will get to see it. Coming in at number eight on my list is Kung Fu Panda the board game. A cooperative game where you can play as Poe or one of the Furious Five fighting against the bad guys in all the movies. And it's really funny. When the movie first came out, I had absolutely no interest in watching it, but somehow I wound up watching it, probably because there's a panda. And I loved it, that Jack Black energy is on point. So I'm excited to see how those stories translate into a board game world. I feel like you can't go wrong with Kung Fu Panda theming. That's a really fun theme to play within. And I really love the movies. So being able to try it out as a board game, I think it'll be really cool. My number eight is Herbaceous, and this seems like it's a set collecting game, and there's different other ways of scoring points by collecting different herbs and either keeping them for yourself, adding them to a communal pile, and trying to keep your opponents from being able to score points by collecting herbs. It looks interesting when it's arranged on the table, and I think set collection games and games where you're collecting a specific type of items can be kind of hit or miss, but I like the art style on these, and I think this one's going to 
hit where some other ones have missed. I'm excited to try something that's basically gardening the board game or tabletop game in this case. There doesn't seem to be a board because in my experience playing video games in particular, I'm just not good at fighting and farming is my jam. So anything that translates my bad video game skills into something I can be good at in a board game format good times. My number seven is Tiny Epic Tactics. I'm a big fan of a lot of the Tiny Epic games and this one's really cool because you're essentially playing on the box and a bunch of mini boxes that are inside of the box. So you're moving your meeples around on 3D terrain that's made out of the different pieces of the box. And I think that's really nifty. I thought it would appeal to you because it has some elements of D&D with how you think about terrain and location and also cool meeples. And everybody loves a cool meeple. It also has fighters, wizards, and rogues. Told you, D&D light. It also has competitive play, cooperative play, and solo play, which is kind of cool to have different game modes to have a lot of variety when you play. So I'm excited for this one. I've liked a lot of the other tiny epic games and I think that this one will live up to it. Lucky number seven on my list is a game called Woodland Wizards, which is something I backed on Kickstarter and unfortunately didn't come in in the past year. In this one, you're not a typical wizard, but a little woodland creature who gets to summon other creatures within the context of a tournament. So it's a fast paced card game featuring a lot of really cute critter art, which is really what drew me into it. You do really like your critter art. If it's a game that has cute little animals, then you're kind of all for it. Don't knock it until you've tried it, man. Critters are the best. That sounded weird. That's not what I meant, guys. I mean, I won't generally argue with that statement. I appreciate that because I'm right. Coming in at number six for me is a game called King of Monster Island which is another yellow game, which are the people who made King of Tokyo. And this game has been described to me as a cooperative version of King of Tokyo. And as someone who really likes that game, I'm really excited to see how it could be played cooperatively. I really like King of Tokyo. It's up there in terms of the games that I enjoy playing the most. It's super simple, easy to teach, easy to play. And push your luck is something I tend to be bad at, but also tend to have fun with. So if it's anything like King of Tokyo, I'm excited to try it. Yeah, we gotta be killer kaijus again! Woo! Godzilla minus one was really big this year, so it's relevant. I guess it was last year. It wasn't this year, but people are still talking about it. We're going to count it. My number six is another Tiny Epic game, and that's Tiny Epic Vikings. I have, again, liked all of the Tiny Epic games that I've played so far, like Galaxies, Defenders, Zombies. I'm excited to try Tactics, and I'm excited to try Vikings. I tend to like Viking-themed games. I have played a fair amount of them in the past, and they're among my favorite games to play. And this one seems like it uses drafting, area control, and set collecting. So mixing all of those strategies together is going to be interesting from a tactical standpoint. I also like all those different methods of gameplay, like area control, but mainly I'm here for the cute meeples. I'm a sucker for cute meeples. Have you noticed a trend with me, Jeremy? I have, but the tiny epic games tend to fulfill that kind of a desire. Except for Galaxy, they didn't really have any cute meeples because it had just spaceships. Sad. My number five is a fun one, Dungeon Brah. That's how I like to pronounce it. It's spelled that way, so I'm assuming that's how it's said. In this, you are combating a love craftian creature named kevin and you're trying not to lose your friendships along the way as you play with your friends and screw them over over and over again and hopefully you laugh but sometimes you don't because you hate each other i thought i liked my friends i'm very confused now sometimes you just want to lose your friends it's okay unstable unicorns unicorns are your friends now this is the dungeon version kevin is your friend now he's a lovecraftian horror make friends with kevin elaine pictures a cute little cthulhu in her head she's like i love him he's my bestie it's exactly like that bird in up it was named kevin too it was also a lovecraftian horror don't you knock my kevin like that i think this game will be fun it seems like it's relatively simple and it's designed to be funny so i think it'll be a fun time my number five is the dwarves the big box because i'm bougie like that Basically, you take on the role of titular dwarves, clearly, who are working cooperatively in order to overcome certain obstacles and different challenges, such as orcs. You can never win against those orcs, can you? They're everywhere. The people in Lord of the Rings won against orcs. They just pop out of the ground like daisies. That's true. But dwarves are good at getting things that are in the ground, so they should be good at the orc killing daisies. Oh, that was a Mulan quote, wasn't it? Yeah, about yeah. the Huns. Yeah, I got there. It was, sounded really familiar when you said it, and I was trying to think of what it was from. But that sounds like a fun game. I like playing a dwarf. Because you're super short? I am not super short. But it also gives me flashbacks of that dwarves versus dragon game, which was really rough. 
And fourth on my list is a game called Open Ocean, where you're trying to attract marine animals to a coral reef. I was drawn to this game because of its interesting art style. And also they've got a lot of Dories and Nemos and I love Finding Nemo, so play this game with me. I'll play it. Ocean-themed games tend to be nice. They tend to be easy to play and easy to learn. I don't know if it's something about the theming, but that tends to be the case most of the time. There's not usually a lot of complicated ocean-themed games. It's the water. It makes everything zen. It's like, we want to do a counting game or a number game. Let's just put fish on it. Fish makes everything better. I think it'll be fun. So I will give it a try. My number four is Helios Expanse. And this basically seems like you're playing a game of civilization, but in space. And space civilization seems cool. I think I'd be pretty good at this game. So I'm going to make you play it and I'm going to beat you at it. It is three to five players though. So you're going to get Lakota too and then beat me and Lakota. Maybe I doubt it because we're better than you. Well, because you guys will usually just team up against me and then I will lose. Unless I draw first blood and then Lakota holds a grudge the entire game. This is what I've learned over several years, Jeremy. It's very important. Yeah, I'll bug him or one of our friends to play and we'll be able to play it a whole bunch and share it with you guys. My number three is something that I think my mom will like. So I'll probably be playing it with her as well as Elaine and that is Wordsmith. She's a big fan of word games and wants to play with the English language. And this one, you're trying to put together letters and then put together words. And you're going to be scoring points based on that. So I think it's something that she dig. And I think it's something that you all would dig too. To me, this seems like a slightly more advanced version of Paperback, which is a deck building game involving words and letters. And I very much enjoy that game. So I think this one would be fun too. Paperback was fun. We played that with my mom too. Bringing it back now, y'all. Ladies. (laughs) What's your number three? My number three is a game called Wicked and Wise where you take on either the role of a dragon who is playing a trick-taking game or a mouse allied to a particular dragon to help them manipulate said trick-taking game. It's a game for two to six players, and I believe the game varies a bit depending on how many people you play with because it doesn't make much sense to be both mice in a game with only two players because then you could just tank both sides. So you probably have to take on both roles. And in a game with more players, you get to team up with someone. So I think the experience will be very different. I'm interested to see how that plays out. So you're playing someone who's sabotaging and then someone who's trying to win? Or those would be the different roles? I think the mouse can either sabotage, as in mess things up for the other person, or or while helping their dragon. But I'm not entirely sure because I've never played. So It seems interesting if that's the concept. So I'd be down to try it. You always have to be down to try it because I have said that we will do this thing. And these are the rules I've laid down in this household. That's true. (laughs) He sounds so sad, but really he's happy inside. What's your number two? And my number two is a game called Wild Realms, which is a game I picked up at Gen Con because let's take a wild guess. The art, which is absolutely amazing. Go take a look at it now if you haven't already. And in this game, you are trying to create an animal kingdom. And I love animals and I love good art. So... I don't really care about the gameplay. I just want to look at pretty things. That sounds bad, but it's true, guys. Always swayed by the art. That was what it was like walking around in Gen Con. It was like, ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at that. That's a cool meeple. That's a cool meeple. That's a cool mini. I want it. But this one, I agree on the art. It seems like it's an interesting concept for a theme, and I'm excited to try it because it seems like it's got a couple of unique elements that I haven't seen paired up before. My number two is The Last Kingdom board game. This is based on the Netflix show, which was based on a book series, but the game is more based on the Netflix show than it was on the book series, which concluded last year with a movie, and I'm upset that it doesn't exist anymore because that was the first thing I watched during the pandemic for an extended period of time and really made those times better while I was watching it. And in this game, you're playing as either the Saxons or the Danes and you're trying to control Britain. You can even play as Uhtred, Lord of Bebenberg. This all means nothing to me because I haven't watched this show, but Jeremy's excited. So I will be excited too and play it with him because I'm a good panda. Yeah, it looks like fun. It looks like it's got some elements of risk and some elements of area control and things like that. And the theming can't be beat because it's an awesome show. And it was an awesome movie. The cute animals. There are no cute animals in there. If there are animals in The Last Kingdom, they die, typically. (gasps) 
Moving on to my number one, I have The Elder Scrolls Skyrim, the board game. I think it's called The Adventure Game. And in this, you're essentially playing Skyrim. You're building a character and leveling it up and trying to stop bad things from happening. You're a member of the Blades, which is mentioned in Skyrim, but you don't encounter them, do you? You encounter like two members of the Blades or whatever, but they were pretty much disbanded by the time you're playing Skyrim. And I freaking love Skyrim. So I'm really excited to play this one because I have dumped well over 300 hours into this game and I want to see how well they make it into a board game, especially with all these really cool minis. I love minis. Yeah, it's got cool minis. It has a cool looking board and it is one of the most replayable and remade games of all time. So let's hope it makes a good board game. It doesn't have any of those weird glitches from the early days of Todd Howard not figuring out how to make a game properly. It just works. And coming in at the top of my list is Tanto Kuore or Quar. I'm not really sure how it's pronounced. It's been out for a while, but I recently backed on Kickstarter the full bundle of all the Tanto Kuore games. So that includes the original, Expanding the House, Romantic Vacation, Oktoberfest, and more. But most importantly, Memento Mori, which is, I think, what's going to appeal to Jeremy because it has a Halloween theme. Unis Anis. Unis Anis. Unis Anis. Not quite. This is a Japanese deck building card game, which is similar to Dominion, but with cute anime girls. And we both like Dominion and we both really like anime and I really like anime girls and I'm sure Jeremy does too. So this should be a really awesome experience getting to play all these games all in one big box bundle thing of awesome proportions. Oh, and there's a play mat, by the way. Yeah, I was about to say, is this the one where you got the special play mats or whatever with it? Yeah, the special play mats and all, I think we're up to seven games now, maybe eight with an expansion and it's going to keep us busy for a while, I imagine. That's not a... I think I will enjoy this. The art looks nice and it seems like they spent a lot of time on it. So I appreciate that. And there you have it. Our top 10 lists of all the games that we didn't quite get around to playing this year, but we want to play this year as in in the near future. What did you think of our list? Do you think there's anything that should be on this list that wasn't? Do you think any of these games just aren't any good? Do you think we're crazy? I mean, in order for them to say that there should be things on the list, they would have to know our game collection and games that we already have that we're going to be able to play this year. They can also make a suggestion of a game we should have bought and didn't buy because we're silly people. That's true. But if you're outside of our window and you know our game collection, then tell us which games we left off the list and that we need to put on. (laughs) Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of this board game content going forward and ring that bell so you know what's up. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye, guys. Hi, Tasia Valenza, a.k.a. Poison Ivy. And you've just been watching King's Entertainment Reviews. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and watch.